Senior care nurses welcome new legislation that addresses violence in the workplace. CMS launches new initiative attempting to help nursing homes address resident safety concerns. And Senator Blast moved to, quote, weaken nursing home emergency prep measures. This and more next. You're watching LTC News with Dane Henning. Welcome to CNA TV Long-Term Care News. I'm Dane Henning. Today is Wednesday, November 28th, 2018. Nursing staff in the long-term care field are pleased to see a proposed rule that aims to address violence that can occur in the workplace. On Friday, U.S. Representative Joe Courtney, the Democrat from Connecticut, introduced new legislation that he hopes will help curb violence that can occur in nursing homes and other healthcare settings. The Workplace Violence Prevention for Healthcare and Social Service Workers Act would require healthcare and social service employers to create and implement workplace violence prevention plans to help keep employees safe. In some cases, nursing facilities care for residents who were former sex offenders, state hospital patients, or several or serve time in correctional facilities. Such residents create risks and challenges to resident and staff safety. Organizations such as the American Association of Post-Acute Care Nursing and Nursing uh, National Nurses United express their support for efforts to protect caregivers while ensuring residents receive appropriate care. The federal government launched a new initiative last Tuesday aiming to help nursing home leaders better address patient safety issues in their facilities. Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services officials last week announced the planned release of a series of offerings they hope may help providers improve resident care. Those would range from tools for assessing the competency of staffers to instructional guides, training webinars, and technical assistance seminars. Offerings in the three-year initiative would be paid for through civil monetary penalties collected from providers. Typically, fines under the Civil Money Penalty Reinvestment Program are collected and returned to states to fund local projects that would benefit nursing home residents. CMS also retains a portion of those proceeds for similar national initiatives. With this new endeavor, the agency said it plans to collaborate with industry experts to launch an ongoing series of toolkits to help improve care delivery and residents' quality of life. Barbara Gay, Vice President of Public Policy Communications for Leading Age, said it supports the requirement which was spelled out in the Affordable Care Act that CMS would use the funds from penalties to support providers. We'll be back right after this break. Join us as we honor CNAs with your host, Lisa Sweet. CNA Heroes, Friday at 7 p.m. Central, only on CNA TV. The ranking member of the U.S. Senate Committee on Finance on Monday blasted a proposal from the Trump administration to ease requirements that nursing homes must meet to prepare for emergencies. In a letter to the Chief of Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, Senator Ron Wyden, the Democrat from Oregon, said he believes the proposal would only, quote, undercut patient safety rather than strengthen it. Wyden's letter coincided with last Monday's deadline to submit comments on the proposed law intended to ease burdens for providers. Changes would include requiring nursing homes to conduct only one care testing exercise annually instead of two and eliminating the, quote, duplicative requirement that an emergency plan documents efforts to contact local, state, and federal emergency prep officials. Provider advocates expressed mixed feelings about the proposal, while patient advocates opposed it. The senator said CMS's rulemaking is ill-timed in the wake of 12 deaths at a Florida nursing home last year after Hurricane Irma. Sheltering in danger is a subsequent report from Wyden and other Democratic lawmakers released earlier this month, also accused skilled nursing providers of being underprepared for natural disasters. He added that savings to each facility would be, quote, negligible, noting a government estimate that it would reduce average provider annual costs by about $2,100 across all types of medical facilities. This has been your long-term care news update. Everyone have a wonderful week, and I'll see you on Wednesday.